Well, hello and welcome back. And thanks for coming back. Where are we? That's what you want to know. Well, we're on the Hotels Road, past Sidonis Avenue, and we're going to head out towards the Paphos Airport. So the idea of this video is to show you how you get from the hotels to the Paphos Airport and how long does it take. Well, if you're driving in a car that perhaps you borrowed, stolen or rented, or perhaps someone's kindly loaned your car, you never know, it's probably going to take us somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes subject to the traffic. It's around about 16 kilometres, so that's around about 10 miles in plain and simple English. It's a truly, truly spectacular day. As you can see, that sky, it's blue. The sea, I promise you, is a beautiful shade of turquoisey blue. And Mr. Paul, well, he's dressed head to toe in blue. So sit back and relax, light yourself a cigarette, pour yourself a tot or two. If your name's Mr. Doug, all the way up in Scotland, perhaps a rum and coke. And if your name's Miss Andrea, well, a cherry flavoured yeah, Pepsi Max or whatever you call that Sherlock Holmes stuff. Anyway, spectacular day. And if you're curious to know what the temperature is, well, if your name is Miss Dawn, you got a husband called Mr. Sean, you got a little cat called Miss Daisy, and of course a very, very clever dog called Bo Bo. The temperature today is in and around 21 degrees. So the 2nd of May, there you go, I've given you a date. The summer, shall we say, has started to commence and it's only going to get better as we keep on going through May. And of course, we're going to chuchuchka dance into June, July, August, and it'll start to cool it down that little bit into September, which I think is probably the best month, to be honest. And then October is very, very palatable as well, as is November, by the way. Often in December, well, it can get a bit chopsy mopsy. And then that, of course, can continue through January and February. Although, if you're very, very lucky, and your name is Lord Richard, and, of course, Lady Judy Nash, and uh, my little mate, who's not that little, and, of course, his name is Viscount Leo, well, you can come out even in January and get a truly, truly spectacular, spectacular week of a holiday. And, of course, if your name is Miss Andrea, and you've got a husband called Mr Mart, again, you can come out over the Valentine's week and get a spectacular holiday indeed. But some people were a little bit unlucky, and of course, I remember one particular gentleman did get a week of rain, and uh, he was not happy. So, Mr. Andrew, we do apologize for that weather, and hopefully you'll give Papos another chance, and perhaps come back again, again, and again. Now, this is a purpose-built road to allow us to get to and from the airport whilst we bypass the area known as Yeraskipu. So, and I warn you now, it looks very tempting, this road, doesn't it? You think, ooh, I can put my foot down here and uh, get a bit of a sprint on. But I warn you now, don't do it, because the boys in blue, they really, really like this road, and on most days, they're hanging out somewhere on it, often in two or three places at the same time. And of course, they're making a small fortune, because the actual speed limit along here varies between 50 and 65 and even as low as 30 kilometers an hour when you come to the roundabouts. So, we understand where they're gonna be, don't we? Yes, sitting in those 50 zones, waiting for you. Perhaps your mind is somewhere else. Perhaps you're fantasizing about how good a holiday you had or how good a holiday you're gonna have. And of course, you forget to look down on the speedo. But guess what? Those boys have got a speed gun going to pull you over and of course well upset your day so as I say to everyone when you're driving around Patfors the actual speed limit in most areas is 50 kilometers an hour now the boys in blue they're a very very nice bunch of guys to be honest and they're very very reasonable and they allow you to travel at around about should we say 20-ish percent over that speed limit so to be honest unless you're doing about 68 69 kilometers an hour they're not really bothered so stick to around about 60 and keep your eye on the speedo and you won't go far wrong and they won't even bat an eyelid and if you're on the highway so the dual carriageway the motorway section between Paphos, Limassol, Nicosia, Larnaca. The actual official speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour. 
again, they're very, very generous, and they're not even going to bat an eyelid unless you're doing over 120. So again, stick to about 110. Keep your eye on the speedo, obviously, but if you cruise at around 110, it won't make that much difference to your journey time, and your stress level will be nice and low, because you understand, even if there is a gun barrel in blue, around the next corner with one of those speeding guns in his hand, you ain't going to even break a sweat. You're not even going to have to, well, put your mobile phone down or your cigarette down because you understand that you're not speeding. Right, so we're off on our ascent to Paphos Airport. As you see on the signpost there, it says Paphos Airport. Keep going straight. So if you're new to the channel, well, you'll understand that Mr. Paul does like to do a lot of driving around. Yes. I'm not a taxi driver, although it could be a little sideline. So if you're looking for a lift from Baffles Airport, and perhaps your name is Lord Damon Ritchie, and you've got a beautiful wife who's known as Lady Zuska, well, for you, special, special price, 49 euros. There we go. Only joking. That's one of the superstars on the channel, by the way. He's been with us right from the very, very start. He obviously needs some kind of brain surgery, psychiatric help, as I do as well. That's for sure. And of course, many people who watch understand that there's probably quite a lot wrong with me. So, let's keep going. And this is a particular hot spot down here for the boys in blue. We've got a nice big lay-by where they can pull you over. And of course, you think, if you know the road, that you're coming to the end of the restricted area. So, of course, you get tempted to put your foot down. And that's when they get you, right there on the left-hand side. So let's keep going as we head out towards the Paphos Airport. It's probably going to take us around about 10 minutes from here. So you haven't got to put it up with my insanity for that much longer, shall we say. Now, let's go and check in with some of the superstars that like to join us on Mr. Paul's Breakfast Club. Probably Dame Anne has checked in because she's the girl pretty much in charge of the show. And of course, sitting next to her will be the superstar, the one and only, the greatest lawyer in downtown Poland. And guess what? I happened to bump into her because, of course, she was Chichutski dancing down the Kedo Paphos Promenade. And of course, we went off with her husband, Mr. Tomas, and of course, this spectacular son who speaks better English than me. Well, that's not saying a lot, is it? But he does. He speaks absolutely perfect English. And of course, his name is Mr. Bart. And he wants to follow in his mum's footsteps because he wants to be the greatest lawyer in downtown Poland. So, He's got a, a long, long, hard bit of work ahead of him. He's got five years of law school and then four years of what we call an English article. So he'll be affiliated to a lawyer's office while they well, torture him and train him at the same time. But of course, at the end of it, when he's around 28, 29, he's going to come out a great, great lawyer. And of course, he'll start his career. And I believe he's going to go places. I believe he could be the greatest lawyer in the world, not just in downtown Paphos. So a very, very big shout out to the superstar known as Miss Anastar, Mr. Tomas, and of course, Mr. Bart, who is fluent in five languages. Unbelievable, isn't it? I'm not even fluent in one language. Anyway, let's go and check in. Let's see how else has probably logged in. I wouldn't be surprised that Viking Ronnie is sitting there with a cup of filter coffee and a piece of toast. And I wouldn't be surprised that the superstar of all the policing in the world, the chief constable, the retired police officer known as Ronnie Miller, probably sit there with a cup of tea and a rich tea biscuit and fantasizing about getting onto that Jet 2 aeroplane and moseying on down to Paphos next week. And if you're in town, don't forget to drop it in the comments. If you want to bump into myself or myself and Marika when she comes back next week, you drop it in those comments and we will do our very, very best to bump into you. Now, we come round that roundabout, as you can see, and we're heading toward the airport. It says nine kilometers on a signpost there. This is what we refer to as the old airport road. Now, you can go up to the highway, that's your choice. And to be honest, it depends on what time of day it is. I would say early in the morning, use the old road that we're on now, and later in the evenings, you use the old road. Perhaps at peak time, it might be wiser to go up towards the Limassol roundabout and join the highway. 
and then of course exit for the airport but of course that's a choice that each individual will make if you take your time on any of these roads of course you will not get yourself into any trouble always be aware that probably there'll be a taxi or something like that stuck up your bottom if you are sticking to the speed limits but hey just take your foot off and go that little bit slower just to annoy them a that little bit more and eventually of course they'll go around you and uh, well gesticulate and all those kind of things but you never know there might be one of these mobile speeding trapping vans parked up somewhere and you may get the last laugh but at the end of the day drive carefully and drive safely and considerately and in fact that is a little speed camera van that was parked up there and he appears to be either getting ready to leave or getting ready to position himself because these little speed vans understand that they can make a fortune. I was reading in the local press the other day that uh, 1,000 fines per day is what these vans are handing out. So we understand they'll be buying more and more and more of these vans because that's a very, very good little earner indeed. In fact, I think I might go and buy one and do some illegal finding as well. Now, where are we? This is a little hamlet called Alexia. I think that's how you say it. That's the Alexia Food and Drinks Taverna there on the left-hand side. Very, very popular. And uh, they do a very, very good silver on a Friday and a Saturday. There's no doubt about that. I've been there once or twice. Now, we're going to keep on going. And the road's going to open up a little bit. You can be tempted to speed, but please, please don't, even if there is someone stuck up your bottom. Take it easy, because you haven't got far to go. From here, five, six minutes, and we are going to start our descent into the actual Pathos Airport and see if we can land this old S-Class right outside the departure and the arrivals door, so you know exactly where you are going. Now, in the airport, as in most airports, there's car parking facilities. You've got a short stay car park and a long stay car park. And of course, you pay at the exit. Otherwise, well, the barrier won't open for you. You've also got hire car companies operating out of there where you can pick up your car and of course, drop off your car. So all the normal facilities that you would find at a normal airport. Paphos is known as an international airport and it's quite a good hub. It hooks you up to most of the places. But if you can't get from Paphos to that place, you can keep going in this direction for another, what, 120 kilometers-ish. So that's about 90 miles in English. And you'll come to Larnaca Airport. And of course, Larnaca Airport pretty much hooks up with everywhere. It really is a main hub, and you can go off anywhere in the Middle East and to most European countries, and even get a link to America and so forth. So we're quite a connected little island, a little island of love called Cyprus. So hopefully you enjoy these videos and uh, if you do, well, why not hit the like, click subscribe and perhaps come back now and again. And if you really want to help to support the channel and keep us driving around making these special videos for you, why not click through to our about page where you will find a little icon that's called buy me a coffee, hunt us down and of course perhaps buy us a coffee or two or even more if you're feeling very, very generous indeed. Big shout out to some of the people that are very, very generous to us indeed. So Stuart Pearson, thank you very much for those coffees. Matt Rhodes, thank you very, very much. And of course the list goes on and on. I cannot thank everyone, but as time goes on, we will always do a big shout out to some of the superstars. Baron John, Baroness Louise, who likes a bit of cheese, who's getting excited because they're gonna to go to London very, very soon going to go and watch Take That and a few other bands in concerts. And uh, after that, September, they're coming back to Cyprus. Lots of people like to come back to Cyprus over and over again. And then some people, of course, do a bit of jiggery pokery and go off there. I mean, I'm thinking of the baby barn or now Miss Fern. They're off to Corfu. And uh, her keeper, Harry the Keeper, his name is, he's going to do a bit of swimming and see if he can find a diamond ring. Because many, many years ago, John and Louise, that's Miss Fern's mum and dad, were in Corfu. And, uh, well, Miss Louise lost her diamond ring. So somewhere in a lagoon is this ring. And, well, Harry the Keeper, 
he wants to uh, get a ring from his foot and put it on that finger and uh, make uh, his keeper, that's for sure. And uh, he's looking for a cheaper alternative. So he's gonna do a bit of swimming in downtown Corfu and see if he can find that ring. If not, Mr. Harry, next time you come to Papos, I'm gonna phone Marios Diamonds and get them to open up and I'm gonna chuch dance you through that front door and your flexible friend is going to get a bit of a battery. Right, we've turned on to the final descent into Paphos Airport. You've got all the big hire car companies out here, and of course they've got actual branches in the airport as well. So this is the final descent. Again, I warn you now, it's quite quiet at this time of day, as you can see, but often on this stretch, there's a lot of people driving way, way too fast, coming at you on the wrong side of the road and this kind of thing. So don't panic, just keep calm keep cool because you haven't got that far to go in the distance now well you can see that blue 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 mediterranean sea unfortunately if you're going in this direction well it means that you won't be seeing it again for a while because obviously it means that you're going to get on a big bird and go back home but hopefully you'll come back to Paphos again again and again so i'm going to say shall we say thanks for watching and of course if you do like what you see why not hit the like click subscribe and perhaps come back for a little bit more of mr paul driving around and having a chat and a jibber or jabber or two big shout out to some of the superstars who regularly watch the show and of course we have the lady known as uh oh so so sweet caroline hopefully I have transported you back into the 70s and hopefully the road services are not too good she understands this so she often gets a bottom on a memory foam pillow and she also likes to pour a tot or two for the superstar known as lord nigel big guns while he browses and peruses through the brightly warped catalog because every time he comes to Paphos, well he likes to buy one or two You've also got many, many other superstars. We've got Double Trouble, or Double Pleasure, as they like to be called, or as I call them, a couple of pains. That's Lord Jeremy and Lord Simon Payne. We'll be coming back out to Paphos in November. And if you want to see some of these people on video, most of them now have appeared on the channel of Marika and Me. Go and hunt Double Trouble down in the search bar on YouTube with Marika and Me, and of course, up they will come. And a couple of hilarious guys, by the way, I consider them to be great great friends and of course we communicate quite often in the comments if you may have noticed and uh, also on whatsapp and looking forward to coming back because of course november is not that far away and of course lady oh, oh so sweet caroline and lord nigel big guns coming back in november we've got ness and andy they're coming out in september and well literally in a week just over a week we've got the lady the superstar amongst all superstars and of course her name is Dame Anne so hopefully this time we're gonna coerce her shall we say and corrupt her and uh, perhaps give her a gluten-free donut and then get her on camera to touch get at it because she's the girl that literally is in charge of the little show known as Marie Curie. So we thank you for watching and we thank you for coming back again and again. We really, really appreciate it. We are humbled and everyone who stops us when we're walking around, again, we are truly humbled. And please, if you want to talk to us and you think we're filming, don't think you're going to interrupt us because you're not. We're not even very professional, as you may have noticed. And we love to chat and we love to be accosted, as we say, live on camera. This is the final straight into the Paphos Airport. So when you come in here now, if it's your first time perhaps, and you're going back home, observe the rules and observe that there are policemen around and there's even men with big machine guns, not that they want to shoot you because that would require them to put their frappe down. But they have got an eye on you. So you've got long stay, as I said, undercover and not undercover. Short stay, which of course is open. And of course, we're now gonna go around a little bit to the right, and we're gonna literally drive past the front entrance, the arrivals and the departure lounges in the Paphos Airport. Not the biggest airport in the world, but it is a very, very nice and a very, very efficient and a very, very simple little airport to navigate yourself through. So, let's see what this chap is doing. He's decided he doesn't wanna go and pay. There we go, right. So that's a higher car. 
and he was going to go into pay and then he's decided not to go into pay. You've got some short stay parking here. Now, in different countries, obviously, they are very strict in the UK, but here, to be honest, you can park up here five to ten minutes and uh, say goodbye to your friends or go and find your friends. So there's the Gumbaros hanging out, one or two with a machine gun or two. So please, please don't do anything stupid when you're here. I'm going to say thanks for watching, and of course, we'll see you in the next one very, very soon.